are forced to solve the linear second order differential equation, which is not in homogeneous form. So suppose a sub one of x times the second derivative of y plus a sub one of x times y prime plus a sub zero x times y is equal to a function like g of x. What are we going to do? We're going to write it in standard form by dividing everything by a sub two of x. That way, we can rewrite this differential equation in standard form. The second derivative of y, note that these two, they get canceled out, plus, let us call a1 divided by a2 p of x times y prime, plus, let us call a sub 0 of x divided by a2 of x qx times y, and on the right-hand side, this gx divided by a2, let us call it f of x. How do you solve this differential equation? The very first step is to assume that on the right-hand side, you have a zero. It's very similar to what we did before. If you have a second-order differential equation with constant coefficient, you form auxiliary equation by using y equals to e to power mx, and then you form am squared plus bm plus c equal to zero, and you divide it up into three different cases. But in any case, you get a general solution or complementary solution as c1, y1, plus c2, y2. So this is your very first step. You set this guy equal to zero to be able to find y1 and y2. Then you're gonna use y1 and y2 to find the particular solution using the variation of parameter. Perfect, so we are rewriting everything. So far we set this guy equal to zero and find the general solution or basically the complementary solution. Now, the particular solution can be written as u1, y1, plus u2, y2. So your goal is to find u1 and u2. To find u1 and u2, first of all, since we write down y sub p in general form, if you take the derivative for each one of these, you're going to apply the product rule as you learn in calculus. And then you take the second order derivative, which gives you from each one of these, you can divide it up into two terms and the summation of them because it's just the product rule. After substituting everything into the differential equation, you have the following case. You get u1 times 0 plus u2 times 0 plus the rest of these terms. How it is useful? Well, this can be written as the differential of y1 u prime 1 plus the differential of y2 u prime 2 plus p of the combination of y1, the derivative of u1, plus, u, plus y2 times the derivative of u2 plus the rest of the terms. In terms, it can be written as the differential of, you can combine these two, y1 u1 prime plus y2 u2 prime plus p of the, the combination of y1 u1 prime and y2 u2 prime plus the rest of the terms. And on the right hand side, it is equal to f of x. At the same time, note that y1 u1 prime plus y2 u2 prime is equal to zero. Pay attention here. On this side, you have the differential. And at the same time, y1 prime, u1 prime plus y2 prime, u2 prime must be equal to f of x. Perfect. We can find the run scan. The run scan, as you remember, is the determinant of y1, y1 prime, and y2, y2 prime. We're going to define two more sub run scans as the determinant of zero and f of x, y2, y2 prime, and another sub run scan, w2, which is the determinant of y1, y1 prime, and zero and f of x. Well, using these pieces of information, the derivative of u1 is w1 divided by w, which in turns can be written as a w1 is 
0 minus y to f of x, which goes on the numerator divided by the run scan itself that you calculated here. And then u1 is nothing but the integral of u1 prime. u2 prime is w2 divided by the run scan, which in turns is equal to y1 f of x. Why is that? Here you have the multiplication of y1 and f of x, and this guy is just zero, so you end up with y1 f of x on the numerator divided by the run scan. And in turns, u2 is the integral of its derivative. Then you can write the particular solution as u1 by 1 plus u2 by 2, and in turns, the general solution is the summation of the complementary solution plus this particular solution that you found here. So these are the steps that we're going to take. Let's take a look at one example here. The second derivative of y minus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to x plus 1 e to 2x. Well, let us set this guy equal to 0 and form the auxiliary equation, which is m squared minus 4m plus 4, or m minus 2 to the second power. As you can see, we get repeated real solution. So the complementary solution is equal to c1 e to power mx plus c2x e to power mx, but m is equal to 2. We're going to use e to 2x, x e to 2x, and find u1 and u2. Very good. The run scan of e to 2x and x e to 2x, as you remember, is the determinant of e to 2x, the derivative of e to 2x, and x e to 2x, and the derivative of x e to 2x, which is using product rule, can be written as e to 4x. Distribute e to 2x into this summation minus the multiplication of these two, you see that it is e to 4x. So this is your run scan that goes on the denominator. Remember that u1 prime is w1 divided by w, which in turn is negative y2, times f of x divided by run scan, and u1 is the integral of u1 prime. Now let us calculate w1, which is the determinant of 0 and f of x, which is x plus 1 e to 2x. And here you have y2 and its derivative. When you do the calculation, this is 0. So you have negative x e to power 2x times x plus 1 e to power 2x. That's how you end up with e to power 4x. Very good. So u1 prime is, by definition, w1 divided by w, we calculated w1, we know the run scan is e to 4x, so these two get cancelled out, and you end up with negative x squared minus x, then u1, which is the integral of negative x squared minus x, is negative a third x cubed minus a half x squared. So, so far, we just found u1, we need to find u2 now. To calculate u2, we need w2, which is y1, the derivative of y1, 0, and f of x. In terms, it's the multiplication of x plus 1, e to 2x, times e to 2x, so x plus 1, e to 4x. Remember that u2 is equal to w2 over w, or the run scan itself, which in terms is y1, f of x, divided by the run scan. So you have y1 f of x time divided by the run scan, and then you can take the integral to get u2. So u2 prime, which is equal to x plus 1 e to power 4x divided by run scan e to 4x, and then if you simplify this, you get x plus 1. Now take the integral to find u2. So u2 becomes a half x squared plus x. We found u1 and u2. We know what y1 is, what is y2. So y of p, which is the particular solution, is the multiplication of u1 y1 plus u2 y2. In terms, you can easily write them this way. u1, which is negative a third x cubed minus a half x squared, 
times y1 e to 2x plus u2, which is a half x squared plus x, times y2, which is x e to 2x. You simplify this, you get 1 over 6 x cubed e to 2x plus a half x squared e to 2x. And then the general solution, which is the summation of complementary solution and particular solution, can be written as c1 e to 2x plus c2 x e to 2x plus the rest of the terms that you have here. So this is the method of variation of parameters helping us to calculate the solution of a differential equation using the complementary solution and particular solution.